Can you describe what happened to you on Monday? Thank you for having me, Amy. Uh, basically, on Monday, I was doing what I've been trained to do for years. I've been a field medic for quite a while. I'm an emergency physician with a specialization in trauma. I do trauma work in London, Ontario, in Canada, where I spend most of the year. And I also do lots of trauma work here. Uh, I know where to be. I've been around gunfire an awful lot. I've been at massacres as well, such as in Egypt previously and a few other places. And I tell you, I was, in fact, the least experienced person on the team when it came to gunshots. The paramedics were even more experienced than I was, unfortunately. We were away from the protest area, about 25 meters uh, west, 25 meters south of the protesters. We, it was calm. Everybody was sort of loitering. There were no tires on fire. There was no chaos. Uh, it was a very controlled scene. We knew where we were. We could see the sniper posts. For sure, they could see us. And uh, I was just sort of talking to the, the medical team. We were uh, testing out some medical devices that we've been trying to make in Gaza because of a shortage. And we had, re we had resupplied because we ran out. It was very early in the day, and yet we had run out of our entire supply, so we resupplied. That's when, unfortunately, I heard a loud bang, found myself on the ground, and realized I'd been shot. And so what happened next? The first rescuer who came to me was a man named uh, Musa, a paramedic who is excellent and uh, who I've trained with and helped train as well. Um, he sort of came over is like, you know, look, doctor, what have you done to, to yourself here? Uh, looked at my leg, cut my pants and started work. He looked at it. It was bleeding. And he said, uh, what do you think? Should we put a tourniquet on? It was a good question, because the fact is that had I been anywhere else in the world, I would have had a tourniquet put on. But we had such a shortage. There have been so many injuries to the arms and legs among protesters that we have a tremendous shortage of tourniquets, which is a belt that you use, I'll, I'll show you one after, to basically stop bleeding uh, on people who have been shot. So when he asked me this, I looked and I knew that I needed one, but I thought, we only have eight. One of them is in my back pocket. I took it out. I threw it to them and I said, no, use it for somebody else. I knew there were many more gunshots to come. They put a pressure bandage. I bled through it, of course, and the next one, of course. Uh, but still, I ended up being okay. I got sent to another uh, hospital and treated there. Had I been in Canada, I've asked my trauma colleagues, because I, like I said, I work a lot of trauma in Canada, and I asked my Canadian colleagues, they said, yeah, you needed a surgery. Yeah, you should have gone in there, cleaned it up, explored it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and then kept you in hospital for a while. But in that moment in Gaza, there were so many casualties. I mean, I was brought to the hospital in a vehicle that held six patients. So there were so many casualties. I was literally the least wounded one. Um, and so I was discharged because everyone knew that the problems to come for me were going to be later you know, deal with it at home now. Dr. Lubani, what happened to the paramedic who treated you, the one who asked if you wanted a tourniquet put on your legs? Musa Abu Hassanin was a great guy. I'm talking about him in the past tense, because about an hour after he rescued me, he ended up going back to the field on a call, and uh, unfortunately, he was shot in the chest. Uh, there was so much fire around him and so much live ammunition that his colleagues couldn't get to him and couldn't treat him. And when they finally did get to him, it was about 20 minutes later. Uh, the problem he had, it's called a pneumothorax, basically air where it shouldn't be in the chest. And it shouldn't have killed him. I knew how to fix it if I were there. I could have fixed it with literally a Bic pen. Um, but unfortunately, he couldn't receive the treatment he needed, and he died. He couldn't receive the treatment he wanted because there was so much fire by the Israeli military forces in this area where the paramedics were, um, that 
he could not be uh, tended to by anyone else? They couldn't get around him? They couldn't get to him, no. There was so much fire there, and anybody who sort of, like, peeked out was shot. So, uh, even, even though the rule for us is we just don't put ourselves in a situation where we get shot, we're incredibly careful. We're incredibly careful. He was wearing a high-visibility orange jacket that had been submitted by the International Committee of the Red Cross to the Israeli army as a paramedic service. I was wearing greens, hospital greens. We were all marked in high visibility. And, and yet, unfortunately, he was shot, and his colleagues, who were all highly marked, were being targeted any time that they showed themselves. So everybody was to the ground until things calmed down, which took about half an hour. Dr. Lubani, do you think you, do you think the other paramedics, how many altogether, um, 19 killed or wounded on mo just on Monday alone, do you think you were targeted by the Israeli military? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what's, what orders they received or what was in their heads. Uh, so I can't tell you if we were deliberately targeted. What I can tell you is the things that I do know. In the six weeks of the march, there were no paramedic casualties. And in one day, 19 paramedics, 18 uh, wounded plus one killed, uh, and myself were all injured. Uh, so, or were all shot with live ammunition. Uh, we were all, Musa was actually in a rescue at the time, but everybody else I've talked to was like me. We were away during a lull without smoke, without any chaos at all, and we were targeted, um, or, and we were rather hit by live ammunition, most of us in the lower limbs. So it's very, very hard to believe um, that the Israelis who shot me and the Israelis who shot my other colleagues, just from our medical crew, four of us were shot, including Musa Abu Hassanin, who passed away. It's very hard to believe that they didn't know who we were, they didn't know what we were doing, and that they were aiming at anything else.